Hey, I'm Mr. Phil and welcome to my simplified odometry tutorial. The uh, repository will basically have three files in it and then there'll be a robot Java, a sample autonomous Java and a sample teleop Java. Basically, you'll take these three files and drop them in your team code folder um, and then you should be able to build the project. So this is the uh, sample teleop op mode that goes along with my simplified odometry tutorial. It's pretty much like any other OmniDrive teleop except that it has a couple of additional features and it uses the hardware class, the robot class that was created as part of this tutorial. So if we look down below here, you'll see this robot equals new robot. And that is where we create the hardware class that controls all of the motors and reads the encoders and stuff like that. So that has robot motor control in it. Plus it also has a, a proportional controller that we're going to use to control the heading of the robot to stabilize everything. So as we go through this tutorial, just remember that the uh, whenever we reference robot, we're talking about the robot class. And if you want to know more about what that class is doing, check out one of the other videos as part of this tutorial. In Teleop, normally you're just driving with the joysticks. You're driving around. And if you have an Omni drive, something you'll notice is that for example, when you strafe sideways, quite often the robot will kind of like spin a little bit and because it's spinning, it'll start heading off in a different direction or it may drift forward and backwards, it may do various things. But controlling that heading is the hardest thing with uh, OmniDrive because any weight differences on the wheels or any frictions, it won't do a pure motion. So one thing we can do with Teleop here is we can use some of the capabilities that we built into our robot class in particular, there's really only one that we're interested in, and that is heading controller, the proportional controller that we use for your. And we can use that in such a way that if we're not physically turning the robot with the joystick, then it makes sure that the robot doesn't turn accidentally, doesn't rotate while it's driving. And that way then, if you're using strafing and, and driving, you'll get much straighter lines and you'll be able to navigate between obstacles because the robot is not going to, you know, you're not going to have to be constantly adjusting the heading and then consequently adjusting the, the motion of the robot. Uh, there's other ways to do this, uh, and that might be with field-centric driving where you adapt to the heading of the robot, but in a lot of cases, it's just simply easier to keep the robot pointing in the direction that it was pointing, um, and then the rest kind of takes care of itself. It's an intermediate operation. So to do that, we just need to add a few more lines to our teleop. So let's look at the teleop code here. So we have some constants up front here. These are things that we typically do in our robot because quite often it turns out that even though the ro robot can go fast, in a lot of cases you don't want it to go fast if you're trying to do fine maneuvering. So we find that quite often scaling down the speed a little bit um, actually makes things faster because you're not jumping around quite so much. So we have these constants in here that set a maximum for driving, strafing, and, and turning. And these are ratios that get applied to the joysticks. And quite often we'll have a turbo button or a slowdown button that changes these ratios. Uh, but you'll just see how they work here. Uh, we have a timer that we use for a, a function I'll show you later on. And there's an auto heading flag. So auto heading is a Boolean true false. And it indicates whether at the moment in time, should the robot be just ignoring the gyro heading and just let the driver do whatever they want to do, or should it be trying to lock the heading as a, to a constant value and therefore not letting it accidentally rotate. So basically we, we're saying we know there's going to be a set point, so we want to lock to that set point. And the auto heading flag tells us whether we should or should not be doing that because there's two different ways the robot could be running. Here's the main code. We come in when the robot starts and we have a robot class that we've created. We initialize it just like an autonomous. Uh, something a little bit more interesting here, instead of doing a wait, wait for start, we do a while op mode in a knit. And what this does is while we're sitting in a knit, it's looping in here and it's reading the sensors. And because this, the telemetry turned on in the sensors, um, then it will display the sensor value. So it'll show us the gyro value. It'll show us the odometry values. So if you move the robot around, you'll be able to tell that everything's working. So that's kind of convenient just as a visual check. But then when you hit play, it drops down into this code here, in this while loop. So here's our loop. So what we always do first is we read the sensors. So this gets the odometry updates, it reads the gyro, gets the gyro rate, all of that fun stuff. Then we do a little check to see if the driver wants to reset the heading or the odometry. And this might be something that they do, uh, you know, sort of if you find that the heading's 
drifted over time or got knocked out of whack and forward and backwards aren't quite where you want them or if you're using buttons to turn your heading manually sorry automatically you might want to reset this is optional you don't need to do this but then we get straight into using the joysticks so this is pretty typical so we're going to read the three joysticks uh, one joystick for each motion uh, and we're going to multiply the joystick value by that safe speed that we showed up top um, and these negatives here are just because it turns out that most of these joystick values are the incorrect sign based on the way our axes are defined. What we start off with is with three variables, one for forward and back, one for sideways, and one for rotating. And then we look at modifying them based on what else is happening in the system. So the first thing we look and see, well, let's see if we want to use the D-pads to override the joysticks to move in pure forward and back with pure left and right. This is come sometimes kind of cool if you're in front of something and you just want to jog a bit to the left. Instead of fiddling with the joystick and making sure you don't go forward and back, you just hit that D-pad button and it moves you in that direction. So that's what's happening here. We're checking the button and then we're setting either strafe or drive to a constant value. And this can be anything you want. It could be fast, it could be slow. It's just sometimes really convenient to have those buttons on a on a um, Omni drive. But then we move into the next section of the code, and this is the section of the code that decides whether we should or should not be in auto heading. So this isn't implementing it, it's just deciding which one we should be in. And it's kind of like a three-step process. And it starts with, is the driver physically turning the robot with a joystick? And that's what this first test is. If the absolute value of the your variable, which is the, the rotating joystick, is greater than 0.05 so if, if you apply more than five percent turn which is pretty much whenever you turn then auto heading is set to false which means we turn off auto heading we don't want the the your controller trying to override the joystick at this point and then we just move on however if the joystick is zero it either means that or if it's smaller than 0.05 it means that either we've been sitting here stopped or we've just let go of the joystick and the joystick has just dropped back to zero so we need to do a test. Um, we could just, whenever the joystick's zero, turn on auto heading. But that has a weird effect that if you're currently spinning and you let go of the joystick and lock in the heading at that moment, the robot's going to, its inertia is going to make it rotate a little bit further. Then it's going to come back to that heading, which is a little off-putting for the drivers. So what we do is we say, okay, if we're not in auto heading, which is if not auto heading, and the turn rate is less than a certain amount. If we've actually physically stopped rotating, then we'll lock in the heading and turn on auto heading. But if the turn rate is faster, which means we're actually still rotating, we wait, we don't do anything. And that way then, when you let go of the joystick, if you're spinning, it'll come to a complete halt and then it'll lock in that heading, which is much more natural for the drivers. So that's what's happening here. Then we say, okay, so now we'll actually pay attention to whether we're meant to be in auto heading or not. We'll just check the auto heading flag. So if auto heading, then what we'll do, we'll say, oh, well, now we want the proportional controller to take charge of the heading. So basically what it does is it uh, um, uses the get output. It's given the current heading and it will try and get back to the last heading that it locked in. So if the robot's strafing sideways and it starts rotating around, as soon as it gets off the, the correct heading, it'll pull itself back onto the heading, and that's, that's what you want. So then we take the current values of the drive, strafe, and your variables, which are set up above, pass them into move robot, just like we did in autonomous, and that will then get converted into wheel motions and, and move the robot accordingly. So that would be enough right there. That would do the job for us. But this is one little section of code down here that's kind of like an insurance. The way this code is written is if you're not moving the joystick, the robot is going to hold the current gyro heading. The problem is if the gyro is drifting, which they do over time, they slowly modify their heading, um, the robot will try and follow that heading. It'll try and keep adjusting it. So it'll actually slowly start rotating. So in a competition that really doesn't matter because you've only got two and a half minutes on the field but if you were to leave your robot on like a workbench and leave it enabled and walk away eventually that robot's going to start slowly spinning because of the gyro drifting and you don't want that so what this piece of code down here does is says okay if there's no input from the driver no drive no strafe no your and i've been sitting here for a certain amount of time and in this case we defaulted to 10 seconds up above then it just it just says, okay, fine. So that I'm just going to keep my controller, my set point set to the current heading. So whatever the current heading is, I'm just going to lock onto it. So I'm just going to follow the heading, which means that if the heading drifts, 
the robot will continually think it's on the correct heading so it won't spin the wheels. So this is just a little bit of insurance here. And as soon as the driver touches the controls, then it'll reset the timer and everything goes back to normal. Everything goes back to automatic. So it's just a little safety thing. Uh, and that's it. So we've got the robot class, sample teleop, sample autonomous. If you haven't already, I would recommend you go and watch the other video that goes with this, which is one that explains how, you know, what the assumptions are, how to set up your odometry modules, um, you know, what the goal is over all of this, just to get a, you know, warm, fuzzy feeling on, you know, why this code is like it is. Um, and as a coach or as a, someone who's new to programming, it gives you a little bit more understanding of how to apply this code and, and what the expectation is. Uh, but other than that, thanks very much for watching.